Agatha Christie. <laughs> Here's a joke for all telepathic fishermen. Hello, mate. Shouldn't be here to like the suit. He's throwing to Lester Pickett. I took the arrows off. <laughs> Got any nurses in? Any nurses? Got any drugs? <laughs> I'm all right now. Rose are red, violets are blue. I'm a schizophrenic, so am I. I've got a new girlfriend, she's half French, she's half Chinese, she sucks your washing. <laughs> Bill Lancaster. Hey, you don't even know how to be in a special hospital. She's played for the football team, went to Liverpool Psychiatric Ward, beat them 6 0, all scored by Edders. <laughs> I want to know the time, I said to the ward there, I said, hey! I said, is that clock right? He says, yeah. I said, what's it doing here? <laughs> Dyslexic, atheist fisherman. Didn't believe in cod. <laughs> yeah, that's all I know, actually. I've been here before. Anybody seen me before? Just wonder what comes next. I'm pissed off, yeah? That should be it. This same, um, what's the joke? I can't remember. This fellow goes to doctors. Oh, uh, actually, uh, were you there? Doesn't matter. I was as well. I, um... <laughs> Christmas every day up here, mate. Christmas every day. I'm all right. You don't even know I'm out, you know. I shouldn't be here tonight, but I'm all right. If you're going fishing in Blackpool, don't go fishing when the brown flag's flying. <laughs> this fella comes home from work in Birkenhead, very unexpected, and his wife's in bed with this fella. He said, hey, what's going on here, like? The fella's like that. He said, I'm from the council. She, she, what's it, what's it? He said, what? So what do you mean you're from the council? He said, I'm the official moth catcher. He said, you got no clothes on? He said, bastards. <laughs> I got, I've got to put the stage back. <laughs> Anybody been to Blackpool? I had one of my turns at amusement arcade like that. Well, the kids were jumping on me, thought it was a new ride. Like, hey. <laughs> well, about it, hey. This fellow's walking down the beach in Blackpool. I see the fellow fishing. He said, of course, I think. They said, no. Anyway. <laughs> No, I'll tell you a better one than that. No, this fellow's fishing, and, and he's, he's fishing, and, he, and he, he catches a bloody big fish, and he's got one of these little pit bull Yorkies. And he's, and he's bringing a fish in, the, duck, the Yorkie's going, ah, 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 ah. His mate said, that's bloody fantastic, that. He said, what do you do when the fish gets away? What's the dog do? He said, somersaults. He said, what do you mean to bust it? I <laughs> don't know anything about fishing, but I've sucked a fisherman's friend. <laughs> Yeah, um, <laughs> I could elaborate on that, but I better not. But, um, no, but, uh, what was, I was going to say something good. No, the trouble about laser, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know, and I don't want it to sympathy for laser, but I am an orphan. No, I'm all right, I'm all right. Don't worry about me. Don't even know a mouse. But, um, but the trouble of being an orphan is that you're very shy with girls. I haven't been out with a girl for about six and a half years, and I'm not, um, you know, it's just. It's just shy, like, and then, um, because that's why I was saying bingo, I hate it. I'm sitting in the dressing room, they're shouting, on its own, Ooh, I hate that. You know, it's very, I hate that. Anyway, I went to the doctor, said, doctor, I haven't been out with a girl for about six and a half years, and tonight I've got a date. He said, well, six and a half years is a very long time. He said, are you sure all your bits and bobs are working? I think, I think so, I don't really know, you know. He said, look, just to be on the safe side, I'll give you this tablet, but it's very strong, so swallow quick or your neck will go stiff. And I was made up, I went back into surgery the next day like that. Oh, yeah, bug, yeah. Oh, bloody hell. Thought that was Mark Holman here for a minute, eh? <laughs> he said, how'd you get on? I said, how did I get on? I said, 27 times. He said, I suppose you want something for your back. I said, no, for my wrist. She never turned up. <laughs> <laughs> never bloody turned up. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave you with this one. Uh, this is my last one. Uh, I, this fella's got a date with a girl. And he said to his mate, I've got a date tonight, and I'm really upset because I can't dance. I'm going to Fatty Arbuckle's thingies. He said, what's him? He said, what can I do? So he said, all you've got to do, <clears throat> he said, if you can't dance, take my word. You put 10 pence on that shoulder, 10 pence on that shoulder, 50 pence in shoe and a pound on your underpants. He said, well, how will that help me dance? He said, that easy. He said, you go, 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence, pound. <laughs> he said, do it again. He said, go, 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence, pound. Hey, you'll have a go at that. Anyway, he's dancing with this girl from Ashby Delisage. And he's going, a 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence, bam, 10 pence. She said, hey, you're a cracking dancer, aren't you? He said, not bad. 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence, bam, 10 pence, 10 pence. 
said, do you want to go back to my place for a cup of coffee? He said, well, Lou, do you be there? I said, no, you be all right, he's on his post. Anyway, <laughs> go back to her place for a cup of coffee. He said, look, you're such a fantastic dancer, you must be a fantastic lover. He says, I am. He thinks, bloody hell, I, I, I've never done it before, what can I do? I'll have to do me 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence pound. <laughs> anyway, he's going, 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence pound. She goes faster. <laughs> He goes, 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence, pound. She goes fast, he goes, 10 pence, 10 pence, 50 pence, pound. She goes fast, he said, oh, sod it, 170, 170, 170. Have your luck. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Safe journey, sir. My wife's into that oral sex now. She turns her back on me and talks me out of it. I was, um... <laughs> We, we've had a bad time, haven't we? We've had a bad time morally. The nation's had a bad time this last, this last year. Mor morals have sunk. Standards are dropping all the time. I mean, all these, the clerics, these bishops, Bishop of Galway, what a bloody letdown, wasn't he? He was at it bonking for... Hey, hey, oh, out he came, Mr Happy, through to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> Bishop of Gloucester, he was at it, wasn't he? Brains went down to Mr Happy. Really, nothing was safe in Gloucester. Labrador, Chihuahuas, going, hey, oh, my. He was at it. Well, you shouldn't do that. I mean, you, you, you look to clerics, don't you, for moral leadership, don't you? <laughs> the Pope was so concerned about it, he's allocated an annual day of relief for all clerics. <laughs> I think he's called it Palm Sunday. <laughs> Please welcome a talent which belongs to Mike Seeley. Come on, Michael. I did a stag night three weeks ago full of fishermen. It was great. All compared in sizes. One said, let's see who's got the biggest willy. So they got them all out, put them on the table, and the puff walked in. He went, oh, a buffet. Anyway. <laughs> There's a new book coming out. J.R. Hartley's just written it. It's like a sequel. It's called Sex and the Erogenous Zones. It's called it Fishing with an Open Fly. In the news today, they're letting gays into the US Army. Could you imagine that? Could you kill a man? Eventually. <laughs> yeah, it's that, wouldn't it? It's gonna be. It's in Scotland, popular place, Scotland. Two Irish lads walking through Scotland. Like that. Look at them two Scotch fellas there. And one Scotch fella had the other fella over a bridge, holding his legs like that. And he had his hands in the water and he was tickling a trout on the belly like that. Two seconds later, eight pound trout. And Mick said, we'll have to try that on the next bridge. He said, right. <laughs> so they're walking down. Half an hour later, they come to another bridge. Right, Mick, go on, over the top. I'll hold you. 20 minutes later, pull me up. Have you caught a salmon? He said, no, there's a train coming. <laughs> Fellow went in the shop. He said, I want to buy a pair of shoes. He said, put them on. He said, they're too tight. He said, we'll try them with the tongue out. And, yeah, yeah. Nosy neighbours, I don't like, I've got one next door, it's Chinese. He said, uh, your house? I said, yeah. He said, is it the same size as my house? I said, yeah. He said, how many rolls wallpaper you use for the front room? I said, 14. Next day, he popped his head over the fence. He said, yeah, pyrrhic. <laughs> I said, you what? He said, yeah, plick. <laughs> I got four rolls left over. I said, so have I. <laughs> Nosy neighbours, they won't leave you alone. They're always over you all. What are you doing? I said, I'm digging a hole. He said, what for? I said, I'm burying a goldfish. He said, that's a big hole for a goldfish. I said, I know, it's inside your cat. <laughs> Upsets him, doesn't it? I'll leave you with my last one. My granddad used to work some funny places. He used to work in a morgue bigger than this. And what he did, you know, no, no, no. You know, when they put the coffins out, he, he used to put the, comb the hair, put a bit of rouge on, you know, get some teeth, fishing rods and everything, tackle at the back. <laughs> Big smile on his face there. Uh, and he, me, me, me granddad used to go round with the mop, you know. Like that. He said, Charlie? Yeah, he said, you know this fella I've, 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 I've just boxed? He said, yeah, he said, I'm not joking. He said, you want to see the dick on him? <laughs> he said, why? He said, 35 years I've worked here, I've seen some stiffs. <laughs> but I've never seen one as big as that. He said, well, take the lid off, let's have a look. He said, well, I can't get the lid on. He said, take his fishing rods out then.
took them out. He said, that's a belt of that. I've never seen one as big as that. My granddad was there. He said, I've got one like that. He said, you what? He said, I've got one like that. He said, you can't have one like that. You must be 96. He said, I have. It's not as long, but it's just as bloody dead. <laughs> Lovely. Very nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. He mentioned the uh, comedians. Did anybody at all see me on the comedians? No, all the wrong bastards stole me. They've stopped me at all, you know. I've always been unlucky, me, you know. I must be the only fella to buy hygiene a fitted kitchen at full price. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it goes. Look at the one armed fisherman. He's there by the side of the canal. Ooh, he's wheeling him in. Perch, roach, all the luck. I stood watching him and says, uh, What's the biggest one you've ever caught? He said it was that big. Well, that's the way I got I'm paranoid. I've been paranoid about my size, you know. I've started wearing built-up bedroom slippers now and <laughs> shoulder pads in my pyjamas. And... I've always hated signs for tall people. Lower your head as you leave the room. You never see signs for short people, do you? Like, watch your ass as you leave the curb, do you? <laughs> You've got to be careful, though. There's a lot of preverts knocking about, you know. Maddie Bloke says to his missus, strip off. Do handstand against that mirror. Put his head between her legs. Ah. So I want to see what I look like with a beard. <laughs> yeah, I left Bolt Anglers Club last week, pissed. It's a good job I was driving and never been able to walk. You know when your legs go? That white line split up. Get so I'm trying to get the door into the key. <laughs> the house was swaying. Yeah. I goes upstairs, I put me clothes to bed and threw myself over the chair. <laughs> and I was ill in the crapper talking to God down that big white telephone. Jesus! <laughs> Christ! <laughs> my teeth. <laughs> Still had the double vision looking down at me two dicks. Put the wrong one away and pissed in my pyjamas. <laughs> all over the carpet. We've all done it. We've all done it. Sorry, ladies. Coming through my toes. <laughs> He's having a good day's fishing. Carp. Roach. Pallet lands on his shoulder. What do you want? Because I'm waiting for a perch. I said to this Irish bloke, you must tell me why did the Irish call the pound the punt? He said it rhymes with bank manager. <laughs> bloke fishing. Shouting his dog, sweaty balls! <laughs> sweaty balls, come here, you bastard, come here! I said, what do you call it sweaty balls for? He said it's got no tongue. I went to the doctors. I said, Doctor, I got a big mole on my face. He said, Why don't you go to the vet? <laughs> he said, I haven't seen you for a long time. I said, I've been well. <laughs> Hospitals are fantastic. A Palomar's got a false arm and a real hand. Because <laughs> back to the pad, there she was, strapped to the bed. You'll do for me, I began to skin off. I said, what are you doing, you silly bastard? I've just been burdled. <laughs> um, quick impersonation of the four stone maggot. Here, fish. <laughs> Ladies.
Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you've obviously never seen a real man before. <laughs> And I don't know whether you've noticed or not, boys and girls, but I've just come back from Spain. <laughs> Brown as a berry, I'll tell you about the holiday from the start, cos what a balls, if I said the wife were not flying, puts their shits up me, them aeroplanes. <laughs> Wings falling off, doors getting sucked off. I wish I was a door. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we were going on a fishing trip. The wife moaned all the way across. My head's bad, my back's bad, my arms are aching. I leaned over the ferry, I said, shut up and keep swimming. <laughs> and I was wanting to be fishing, ladies and gentlemen, but she's there on a topless beach. I thought a go topless meant you took the anky off the top of your head. <laughs> Lord of shade, I'm surrounded by... tits. <laughs> Crawling about in the sand on all fours and leaving five tracks. <laughs> yeah. No, one wasn't me belly. <laughs> Tell you a joke here, you'll laugh your tits off. <laughs> oh, you've heard it. <laughs> the wife's parading up and down on the beach and what a mouth on her, everyone can hear. Albie, do you like me new flip-flops? <laughs> I said, the crap, will you put your bra back on? <laughs> Tell you what it is as well, once you're abroad, even if you're 20 stone like me, you start to feel a bit athletic, you know. <laughs> you do well. And I go to bed dressed like this. Sex unleashed. <laughs> So I can beat the Germans down for the sunbeds on a morning. And one morning I leapt out of bed. I'm going to show you a real athletic leap for a 20 stone man. Ladies and gentlemen. As I leapt out of bed, the wife noticed the stain on the sheet. She said, Look at that, you dirty fat pig. I said, I've been leading it. She said, I'm not bothered about you, you fat slob. How embarrassing when the cleaner comes to do the room and changes that bed in there, that big mucky stain. You dirty bat. I said, I'll sort the cleaner out. I pinned a ten pound note to the stain. <laughs> I went down the beach, had a lovely day. When we come back, the cleaner had left us a note. It said, thank you very much, come again. <laughs> I must tell you about this Pakistani fisherman. No, true, listen. Cos they're all over them Pakistanis and they're into everything, now, you know. I've got a Pakistani living next door to me, he's a right cheeky pig. I'm in my garden the other day and he pops his little black head over the garden fence. I'll be! I said, what? He said, I just thought I would be telling you I am cleverer than you. I said, piss off. <laughs> I said, how do you work that out? He said, I don't live next door to a Paki. <laughs> So there was this Pakistani and he loved fish, fishing Besham, you know, all his life he fished, 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 fished. So they shut the shop, fish, 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 fish. And he died and he went to heaven and he knocked on the gates of heaven. St. Peter opens the gates, he says to Pakistani, what do you want? He said, I want to be coming in. St. Peter said, no, no, Pakistanis, you don't come in here, this is heaven, you go to Allah. He said, let me be telling you, Mr. Peter. When I was on earth, I was very, very good citizen. I give 20 pounds to guide dogs. I give 20 pounds to leukemia. And I give 20 pounds to heart research. Me very, very good. St. Peter said, did you? I'll go and see the boss. <laughs> Went away, come back, the Pakistani said, what did he say? He said, there's your 60 quid, fuck off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, children nowadays, you don't see the kids like Sakine on fishing now, do you really? Because kids now have no respect. In fact, I think kids should be born at 18. 
Could you imagine that, lads? If there were, you'd walk in the maternity ward, it'd pop out and you'd say, are you getting a flat or what? <laughs> Don't. See? A bit of peaceful fishing for the young lads down the river, it would teach him a bit of solitude, wouldn't it, you know? But you don't know. Where was I the other night? An acid party. Three batteries I drunk. <laughs> I walked in, there was two lads sniffing glue and there was an Irish lad sniffing sellotape. <laughs> Skinhead in the corner sniffing concrete. I said, what are you doing? He said, piss off, I'm on the hard stuff. <laughs> I went fishing, I sat on the riverbank all day, caught one Wellington boot, and I packed up and on my way home. Passing a wet fish shop, I went in, I said, could I have three trout, please? The man behind the counter said, do you want them wrapping? I said, no, I'll stand in the corner and throw them at us. At least I can say I've caught the bastards. <laughs> yeah, And you'd laugh, a little girl come in the fish shop and she said, could I have two pieces of cod, please? He said, large or small? She said, I'm not bothered, I'm just going to stick them in my knickers so I can smell like the big girl said. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> and as we walked out the fish shop, there's a blind man walking past the wet fish shop. He shouted, good night, ladies. <laughs> two fishermen sat on the riverside and one says to the other, I've got some things in my pocket that boost your sex life no end. <laughs> His mate said, what are they? <laughs> he said, the condoms. <laughs> ah, he said, me and the wife, we don't use condoms. It's like washing your feet with your wellies on, we never bother. <laughs> he said, no, listen, listen. Condoms now, they're all different flavours. Chocolate, strawberry, lime, vanilla, you put one on. Get the wife to go down and... Guess the flavour. Can even get lemon ones now, you come in a jiffy. <laughs> Did you know, sir, that condoms now with this age and that, they have a serial number on the end? Did you know? No, you won't roll them far enough back, will you? Sorry, I, 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 I never thought of I never thought. So he said, oh, give us a meal then. He went home, he said to the wife, Betty, get up them stairs to bed. I've been fishing with you and he's given us some to boost our sex life. She said, what are they? He said, condoms. She said, we don't use them and put my nightly down when you're finished. You know the type, lads, one of them that has to get the vibrator pissed. <laughs> he said, well, you get a bit of passion about your woman. He said, they're all different flavours now. Chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, licorice. He said, I'll put one on, we'll go to bed, we'll have one of them 60 odds. <laughs> you go down there and try and guess the flavour. She said, well, I'll try. <laughs> They're in bed ten minutes and she's there. Oh, uh, uh. She popped her head out the cover, she shouted, cheese and onion! <laughs> he said, I haven't put one on yet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time. You've been super. Take care of yourself. Thanks, <laughs> Sounds some good stuff. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, we are responsible for the children. We bring them into the world. I've got two boys to my first marriage, and uh, they're doing very well at school, my lads. One of them's football mad. I've just managed to get him into the Bobby Charlton School of Football in Excellence in Manchester. And he's doing well. He's only been there three weeks. He's starting to go bald already, so it's working, like. Right? <laughs> the other lad, he's exactly opposite. He wants to be an astronaut. He said to me last week, he said, Dad, I'd like to be shot into space. I said, if I hadn't been pissed 13 years ago, he might have been, son. <laughs> I love them adverts, mate. Have you seen that Danny Baker with his three packets of washing powder going around the supermarket? And he bumps into Alex or Kane Higgins. And he says to Alex, he said, I'll swap you my three big packets of white for your small packet of white. And Higgins goes, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs>
And I like that other one as well, you know. This was me three and a half years ago. Look at me now. I'm on the slim fast diet. <laughs> Fucking great with chips. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff we have to watch in it nowadays. It really is, you know. Uh, mastermind with Magnus Magnuson. He says to Paddy, what would you like to answer questions on? He said, spelling. He said, spell paint. He said, which colour would you like first, sir? <laughs> What's two sixty nines? He said, a meal for four. <laughs> How do you stop a female touching your dick? He said, marry the cow. <laughs> no, he, he said, what, what's got four wheels, all blue, and sleeps too? He said, a gas board man. <laughs> he said, and finally, when a Pakistani dies, why did they bury him 50 feet under the ground? He said, because everybody hates them, but deep down, they're very nice people. <laughs> I don't mind them, me, they're coming handy. Uh, they do. Where else can you get a loaf of bread at four o'clock in the morning? They do come in handy. <laughs> I've realised why there's so many Asians living in England, they're all looking for Solomon Rushdie, you know. Oh, what they'd do with him if they got hold of him. Because he's a clever man, him, you know, Solomon Rushdie. He's had 57 different addresses since he went into hiding. He reckons nobody will ever find him. I bet Reader's Digest do, they'll find every bastard. <laughs> but, you know, these sort of tapes are wonderful. They get a bit of humour, a bit of observations of life, we call it. And people say to me, is comedy a hard way to make a living? Well, it can be difficult, and then you get evenings like this where it's wonderful. But I came back from a job the other week. I was right pissed off with myself. I'd not had a laugh all night. I thought, I've got to find a new career. And I looked down our local newspaper, and I saw this job advertised at the local hospital. Well, our local hospital is Jimmy's. You've all seen it on your television, Jimmy's. It's on at a nice time. You're just having a bit of liver for your tea, and they're taking some of these gallstones out. <laughs> Well, I saw this job advertised, gynaecologist labourer, breast examination clinic assistant. One man, two jobs. So this perv from Nantwich goes in for the interview. He said, uh, I'm interested in the job. He said, uh, what does it entail? Personnel officer said, well, he said, we get about 30 ladies a day in here for breast examination. He said, when they arrive, I'd like you to help them undress, take them into the showers. When they've had a shower, there's some nice warm towels, you can help the ladies dry off. Then take them into a little side ward, lay them on the bed, bit of baby oil in the palm of your hands, Rub them in the mammaries, he said, and get them ready for the doctor to come along and do the examination. Okay, now he said, I like the sound of that. He said, 30 days. He said, I'll, uh, I'll work my holidays as well, if you like. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, what about the gynaecologist part? He said, well, that's down to you as well. He said, well, the ladies are on the bed. He said, quick look at the old uh, selection box, you know, the old, uh, the old myrtle. Any shaving necessary? A little bit of Remington, he said, and get them ready for the gynaecologist. Oh, he said, I'll take the job. He said, well, can you be in Aberdeen on Monday morning? He said, Aberdeen, he said, is that where the clinic is? He said, no, that's where the QN's for the job you'd have twat, he said, as well as <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, you've been a superb audience tonight. Thanks for listening to me, thanks for laughing. We'll see you again sometime. Thank you. <laughs>